All right, tell me something. What's wrong with this picture? Zach Galifianakis, everybody. <laughs> Missing something, right? Yeah, the music. The music knocked out each night by Paul Schaefer. David Letterman without Paul Schaefer is like Michael Jordan without Scottie Pippen, or David Caruso without uh, those sunglasses. Paul has been Letterman's band leader for 30 years, and it's a dream job for Schaefer, who grew up in Thunder Bay, Ontario, and got his showbiz introduction when he stumbled into a Toronto production of Godspell that featured, among others, Gilda Radner, Martin Short, and Eugene Levy. From there, Paul went to New York, joined the cast of Saturday Night Live. Live from New York. Helped put together the Blues Brothers with Aykroyd and Belushi, and soon landed on Letterman. Was Paul Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra. He was even offered the part of George Costanza on Seinfeld. Though he hasn't forgotten about us, he's a proud Canadian, and he's the host of 2012's Canada's Walk of Fame Awards. Please welcome to the program, Paul Schaefer. Welcome. May I sit in the red chair? This is your chair now. I love these red chairs. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm great. They said wear black. George will be wearing black. I actually am. How, yeah, how and I wear black too. Welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for taking you very the time. Much. I mean, we're lucky that you're in town actually because you're in Canada hosting this Walk of Fame thing. This is very exciting, Canada's Walk of Fame. I got a star on Canada's Walk of Fame about six years ago, yeah. and this time, uh, Randy Bachman, my old friend is getting his star. He's getting his second star, because he got one for the Guess Who, and now as a soloist. And he said, would Paul come up and give me my star? And then uh, the network said, well, as long as Paul's coming up, how about if he hosts it? I said, I'm your man, uh, especially if there's free coffee. And <laughs> it turned out there was. It's not the first time that you've been in the company of something so special. Like, obviously, the world remembers this moment here. I'm afraid to look at what. I accept the Nobel Prize for peace at a moment when 22 million Negroes of the United States are engaged in a creative battle to end the long night of racial injustice. So that's when Martin Luther King obviously is accepting the Nobel Peace Prize. We, uh, for, for, I know that in the course of your career and being with David Letterman from, for as long as you have, you have met and become friends with and worked with perhaps all of the great performers of all time. Mm, it's, it's, it's almost true, yes. But you had a moment with Dr. King. Well, you're talking about, uh, I was with my parents at age, I don't know, 14, and we were vacationing in Nassau, Bahamas, and uh, we stayed at the Nassau Beach Hotel, uh, downtown Nassau, and sure enough, Dr. King was uh, at the hotel too. And, um, you know, we had, coming from Canada, we didn't have anything like racial prejudice here. Or not, not white we, and black. There was certainly... It, well, in, we had, our, I guess, yeah, our yeah. own problems here. But, yes, uh, all I know is that Dr. King was swimming uh, in the pool at the Nassau Beach Hotel. And when he went into the pool, everybody else cleared out. All the white people left. All the white people left this pool. I didn't know, I didn't know why or anything. I went for a swim. The two of us were swimming together, me and Dr. King, in the pool there at the Nassau Beach. That was my moment. I went swimming with Martin Luther King. Did you guys talk at all? Like, did you, did oh, no, you I was too shy. I was 14 years old. Do you, you know? remember, did, how was his form? Do you uh, remember what he was? <laughs> what, it, was it, it good? It was a very Nobel-like, yeah. <laughs> What did you, I mean, as Canadians, when you watched everybody leave, how did your parents react? What happened in that moment? Mad. Yeah. My dad said, we can't stay at this hotel. We checked out of the hotel. What did your family make when things started to really turn on, when, when Letterman started to become more than just a TV show, but it became a cultural force? Redefined pride. My parents loved show business anyway. They brought me up. You know, my father was a conservative uh, attorney. Well, we say attorney in the U.S. But in his heart, didn't he want to be a performer? He loved music. He turned me on to the hippest in the great vocalist, jazz vocalist of the day. His favorite was Ray Charles, Billy Eckstein, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald. This was how I was brought up. On Sundays, when he relaxed, these were the records that he put on. Uh, I think it seeped in, and my mother, same thing, but from the other angle, she loved Broadway. So I really had, from them, a full-scale uh, 
a totally diverse uh, in, uh, introduction to music. And then Sunday night when it was time for the Ed Sullivan Show. Well, watching the Sullivan Show with my parents was an experience. Yeah. My dad taught me how to recognize toupees. You know, he would be watching Sullivan and he would say, and I see, oh, there's a good toupee. You see, you know, you see that guy? You know? Tony Bennett, great toupee, you know, great singer, better toupee, you know. And I've always learned how to recognize a toupee. You, you never put one on. <laughs> that was the craziest thing. Once the Letterman show started to hit, it was a little late, but my mother was saying, don't you think, Paul, you should maybe get a... Get a hair I said, Mom, you brought me up to recognize a bad toupee. And what are you talking about? She meant well. She didn't want to have a part of that. <laughs> Stick around. More with Paul Schaefer right after this. That's awesome, man. I said, let's go to your place. I said, let's go to your place, Paul. She said, why? I don't know what this is for. There you are. You are pulling clips that I don't even know where you're getting them. Well, we have Marty a... Short and, and me again. Yeah, 1986. Yeah. Oh, 86. 86 really? I it? was barely out of diapers at that time. <laughs> you were brand new. Yeah. Um, you have one of the great moments in film, and this is Final Tap. What yeah. a thrill to be a part of that film, uh, which has legs. People are still talking about it. Dude, pe most people, modern bands, I remember talking to Noel Gallagher from Oasis, and it's, he said it took him 20 minutes before he realized it wasn't an actual documentary. <laughs> it was the first of a, of a genre which became known as mockumentary because right. it was a, pretending to be a documentary, uh, but of course it was, it was really a fictional movie. You also could have been another iconic role, true or false, you could have been George Costanza. That is absolutely true. I don't think uh, Jason Alexander likes to hear me tell that story, but I gone. This is early days of uh, the Letterman Show, and I had nobody to answer mail or answer calls. And a message came through. At least the receptionist took a message. Jerry Seinfeld called. He's getting a show, his own show. He wants you to be his sidekick. You don't even have to audition. And I was kind of overwhelmed. And I said, Jerry Seinfeld. What kind of a show could he possibly get? And, and I wondered why Seinfeld was a little bit cold the next time he saw because I never called Matt. But yeah, I could have been on the most iconic show in the history of television situation comedies. You may have been okay. You may have done all right. Well, I mean, you know, I'm happy where I was. I, I'll tell you one thing. In, in 77, I had a little sitcom called A Year at the Top. It, it, it only played one summer on CBS, and it, it wasn't successful. I and a kid named Greg Evigan played two kids who sold their souls to the devil in return for a rock stardom. And even though it was kind of like the Monkees uh, was in the 60s and every episode would end with a song, it just wasn't enough music for me. Right. And I wasn't happy until I was playing, you know. Making music makes me happy. I was getting very unhappy on that. And when the show flopped and I got my old job back on Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. uh, I was happy again. Yeah. So I know that I got to play the piano. Yeah, well, that's where you love to be, right? Yes. Have you had moments where you've been on that stage, on the, on the show with Dave, and you're just, you can't get the band together and things aren't working, and you're, it's a wing and a prayer? Oh, every night, yeah. every night. <laughs> the show hasn't gotten any easier to do. It's crazy. Really? We're, but we're working by the skin of our teeth. There's never any time to rehearse. Uh, I never thought professional show business would be like that, and I still can't believe it. <laughs> I'm a little more, now at least I know, you know, when I call in at 10 a.m. and they tell me what's going to be on the show that day, I say, well, I'm not even going to pay attention because by the time they were taping, it's going to be totally different really? anyway. I just try not to let it phase me. What's your Desert Island record? What would I bring uh, to a Desert Island? One, uh, got to be uh, Laura Nero, Eli and the 13th Confessions, which I bought it over at Sam the Record Man nice. here uh, on Young Street. The longer you, you've been away from Canada as a, as a daily resident, um, do you identify more with it or less with it? I think you're right. I think I identify more with it. Uh, the more I learn about the U.S. and especially the American politics. It's crazy down there, you know, it's so much saner up here. And I think back to my sane days here in Toronto and Thunder Bay, Ontario, for sure. It's really great to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you all. And you've been a great audience. He's uh, hosting Canada's Walk of Fame. So the awards are actually uh, taken, uh, you'll see them on Global and on Slice. October the 14th is the day where he is not the sidekick, but he is the host. Paul Schaefer, everybody. We'll be right back. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, everybody. It's been a pleasure.